You're like, well, hold on. But this is weird now because they lost the core of their team. They lost the best player yeah. potentially in the world to Liquid, and they go and pick up another pub star. And mm -hmm. he's also awesome as well. And, and not to mention that when they formed OG, they got kicked from Secret. So yeah, they were the leftovers. Yeah, they, they were the leftovers. They look like problem players. They look yeah. like they weren't going to do so well. But honestly, they, they're definitely one of the most res They should be one of the most respected teams yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, I feel like they don't always get the credit they deserve. But I would love to see them win a TI, though. I, I think feel they like really deserve yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing that's missing from the shelf already. I know I'm yeah. talking about that 18 months of a team being formed. That they've yeah. won three majors in that time. And we had teams that have been formed for 10 years, haven't won that many. But the TI thing is still missing. I know that No Tail, amongst all the players, and Fly, actually, that's the one, isn't it? Like, if they would yeah. actually say, if you could give them, like, sorry, guys, we can't give you DAC and we can't give you Kiev, but you can have TI, they'll go, we'll that, take it. But that's we'll we'll take it. Every team is TI. That's yeah. the goal, yeah. and not ju not just for the money. Obviously, the money is a big deal, but that's the best in the world. Yeah, the players that are playing at this level don't play specifically for the money because you know that it takes a long time before you can even think about that. They just play to be the best. Yeah. A and TI is, is, is what the ultimate it, isn't it? proof. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's turn our attention to LGD uh, LFY. Uh, bit inconsistent, Purge, yeah. in terms of results and being here, actually, in the last two days. Sometimes they look like they're incredible, like this morning against uh, Wings, 2-0 in Wings, and you think, oh, wow, okay, brilliant. But then on other days, they're losing to teams that they really, on paper, should beat. That happened? Like Empire? <laughs> yeah, <I can't> <laughs> like uh, Empire, yeah. They, they lost 2-0 to Empire. Yeah, yeah. 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 but beat Wings 2-0. Yeah. You know, when you look at that, you go, okay, they lost to a CIS qualifier who can't qualify for Kiev, but they beat the world champions. So I yeah, think so it's, uh, you know, you're like, what, what, that doesn't make any sense. What, what is it about them that's inconsistent? I, I have no idea. I didn't catch their games today. I, I, so I thought they looked me real mediocre against Empire yesterday. Yeah. They, so. they did. And I feel like the reason they lost against Empire is because they weren't sure what to expect. Right. The reason that they that they did well against Wings is they know Wings. Sure. Everybody knows Wings. And, Wings is, not, and Wings is not the Wings that we saw uh, Admittedly, a couple Admittedly, but we've just seen... Two zero against Faceless True. and Facebn still being absolutely godlike. Yeah, yeah, and we have also seen uh, VGJ lose a game to LFY as well. And VGJ is definitely that's a team that I that I consider yeah. very high up there as well. So I feel invited like invited for the major. Invited for the major. I feel like LFY is is definitely familiar with all the play of all the Chinese teams and finding their groove here against the Western team. So in this case, I mean, going up against OG, already a tough challenge going up against another Western team. We'll see what they're made of. They are a very fun team, uh, irregular, sure, mm. but very fun to, wa to watch. Yeah. And if, if there's any team, or rather any player of the team you want to keep your eye out for, it's White. He is uh, he's the playmaker. He is very aggressive. He plays the roaming heroes. Yeah. I mean, that helps a bit. You have, you have I was going to gonna ask you about the matchup. What, what, what two players do you want to see matched up in this? What one should we keep our eye on? I, I, w I would say I would say keep your eye on White so supports. Yeah. Me. Support. Yeah. Yeah. And White would play that. the the four in that case. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's uh, the matchup. So y you know, okay. There's a lot of people that you know you you can. J it's Jerex. You can't compare Jay people God. to. Yeah. It's this is it seems like a really. Does he need his own page right now? Is, yeah. that, is that what you're <laughs> talking about? Featured matchup Jerex. I mean that's it. it. That's the only thing that you have the matchup. It feels really yeah. unfair I'm to put him against anyone right now. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the reason being just because there, there's so many teams where we talk about their roamer guy that's yeah. good. Um, yeah. and, and he was one of the first players that just completely roamed. Um, had some amazing bounty hunter performances yeah. around like TI5 yep. where it was just insane yeah. how far ahead he got. And then the uh, spirit. Yeah, I think he had one of the highest uh, GPM or XPM um, stats for right. the whole tournament because they, they had some really amazing games in the qualifiers, I believe. Um, just he had just incredible player. Yeah, yeah. Kind of set the standard for roamers everywhere, really. So so it's a bit of an awkward matchup in in that regard because, you know, it's still Jerex. There's a lot of there's not a lot of people that compare to him. Uh, and White doesn't play the same type of hero or same heroes, but still plays the same type of hero. So Monkey King, Pudge, earlier yep. today as well uh, against Wings. Uh, he, he is fun to watch, and he's one of the few that actually plays Bounty Hunter still consistently uh, over the last couple of months, even though the rest of the teams kind of stopped Showed looking away from at Bounty Hunter. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, on Fun paper, I guess there's there's really no point in doing predictions because both of you yeah. are going to say two zero OG, aren't it? LFY. No. no <laughs> <laughs> nope. I was like, wait, what? No, I'm going to pick OG. I think they're going to continue winning. Yeah. Um, unless they they decide to do something a little bit out there. 
Um, maybe they'll pick some weird heroes to, uh, to test some things out. Well, they did that the in the final. last game with, with Ark really Warden, and, and, they still and it still won. won. It did. It went rough in the early game, though. The Ark Warden yeah. must have gotten pressured. I only started watching around I mean, it, minutes, it had a peripheral impact on the game anyway in the win, but they're still deciding oh. to try some stuff out. Yeah. Um, which just seems incredible. If teams can't beat them when they're messing around, and I mean, I won't say yeah. messing got around. Hope. I, I, I don't think they're that kind of team, but I think they're definitely. It's clear they like theory crafting a lot, um, and yeah. and that's the kind of stuff that sometimes you'll you'll give a little bit of a shot towards. Okay, yeah. so two zero for purge. Yeah, Shiva. Well, what would I go for? Mm, tough one. Yeah, uh, two zero OG as well. Yeah. I think in terms of trying new things out, perhaps they'll do that. But at the same time, I mean, they're OG. They're always playing to win. It's not like they're gonna. You know, yeah. bust out something completely unorthodox that they didn't think through, and that wouldn't work. So I think you know yeah, they you got know. this. Y you never <laughs> know. This is true. You can't get into the heads of the players. Uh, can they? Can they even not get top bracket now? No, I think uh, nine uh, points. They, is, uh, uh, in theory, they could they could be tied if they lose their if they lose two zero here. But they could be tied, and they will still be no one one yeah, and two. Yeah, and and then they'd be well, they could be two three because another oh. team could get nine. All right. Yeah. So in theory. But it's very unlikely. Yes. Like super unlikely. And they would need a point from this game and they would be guaranteed top so two. So play one, then mess around. Yeah. Win one, and then mess around. <laughs> I, I would still say 2-0. Well. <laughs> <So laughs> that, that doesn't change my opinion here. Okay. Um, in terms of the man, the myth, the miracle, um, where is he right now in the world scale of things? We talked about him last year potentially being the best player in the world um, at various points throughout last year. Is he still there or is he, has he changed his game in any way? I mean, we saw him playing Sanking support earlier on. Is he yeah. still the best player in the world? Uh, it's kind of hard to say, I guess. Uh, it seemed a lot more obvious when he was on OG because he yeah. kind of came out of nowhere. He had this big like hoopla from his pub plays and stuff yeah. like that. Um, Is it also because so there was a, a four protect one kind of thing going yeah, on with OG? Much more defined yeah. than there is in Liquid, isn't it? It seemed really obvious when he swapped over to the new team that there was something way off. He just mm. didn't yeah. look like the same player. And uh, the space they created for him and, and the fact that No-Tail doesn't play the greediest carry. He usually would do like juggernauts and push towers and stuff be the frontliner, that kind of stuff really helped him shine through. And uh, But I think, th honestly, the other thing is there's just a lot of really good, super talented players right now. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the Sumail effect really yep. comes of the scene from nowhere. Super high MMR, insanely good player. And also all these teams are like, I need to get that new hot talent and yep. throw him yeah. in my mid lane. So I mean, Sumail really has trailblazed this, hasn't he? I, mean, I think so, yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways. The Open the door. Because before that, it's almost people were like, well, he's okay on the pubs, but it's pubs. Can't yeah. really take anything from that. Hasn't played at a LAN, hasn't played in the team. Yeah. Probably. And that was kind of the mentality, wasn't it? And then Sumail came, came in at DAC two years ago, actually. And uh, suddenly lit the world up. Don't, and then don't forget that land right before that right they lost. D2L? D2L. D2L. Not the D2, C. Just D2L, Last Vegas. Yeah, the Vegas. original D2L. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so it, it comes out of nowhere and plays amazingly. And then, of course, wins TI within six months. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. So when that happens, I, I think that's when people go, well, okay, then maybe maybe the MMR stars <laughs> are okay. We too. should probably try them out. Maybe and then Miracle comes the in and Anna comes in, SCC comes in. I mean, we've had this quite a few players now who have come from you know, so-called nowhere, and, and they're now considered to be either bright prospects or top players. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think the best uh, place is most visible is definitely in the Chinese scene, because for right. such a long time, it was kind of the same I don't know, 20, 25 players was. seemed to just shuffle and shuffle yeah. and shuffle, but now we're getting these, like, I mean, that was these the squads where we don't scene. recognize. Uh, yeah, but uh, how many how many teams exist that are all brand new talent or mm. are four out of five but brand the new talent? Right, That's right, more right. The Chinese right. teams also yeah. developed this junior or sister program as well, which yeah. nearly all of the top teams have, which has also allowed a lot more players yeah. to come in and be tested and then start beating them, the so-called main team. And that's led to some roster shuffles, mm -hmm. which have now meant that you've got maybe eight to ten Chinese teams where there's you know brand new talent coming in almost every year. Yeah, it's, it's definitely fun to see the mix up. It yeah. makes it more interesting to watch. New why don't, why don't Western teams have B teams or junior teams? That was the question um, I was asked personally yesterday. Sponsors aren't as bankrolled, really. I mean, uh, if you if you're if you're trying to sell like individual sponsorships, the the money's just not the same versus being like a giant company that has like I don't know. I just feel like there's more money in China hmm. in terms of. But it would make more sense for a team like say EG or Fnatic or some of the big names in esports okay, to have so had a, a junior. But well they have one. They have one big team, and it's you know it's arguably one of the best teams in, in the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know why would you why would you have another one? It's and never going to be as good as the other. And one. It's, it's also difficult. maybe that's that was the theory in China though, and it's certainly turned around yeah. as we see on screen right now. We're proof in the pudding, because LGD's forever young team are here, and the main team aren't. Yeah, that's true. That um, is true. And it's not just money; it's also location as well, yep. and talent. Then, so not only 
do need to find a, a B team of five players, but they also have to or have desire to live in the same area as your original team. And uh, you have to worry about like what country they're from. It's just there's so many more issues yep. in the Western mm. scene yeah, versus really Eastern. All right, let's get into the draft. Uh, got a Centaur first pick. We've seen quite a few of those. Uh, OG have been picking that as well. And a Monkey King first, ki uh, first pick for LGD Forever Young. Uh, not sure if they've been picking it first, but we've definitely seen a lot of first pick Monkey Kings. They, they, pick, they picked it first as revenge. well against, yeah. uh, against Wings, the, the game that they got Monkey King, because the other... Yep. The other game, it was uh, Wings, actually, that got the Monkey King first yeah. pick, which they lost. And then so. uh, just uh, corroborating the story that we told earlier, uh, why is Lena not picked by any other teams in China? Well, oh, OG just picked it, and uh, EG played it earlier on with some mail. Yeah. So it, uh, it is getting picked, but just not perhaps as prevalent as uh, the Chinese teams are using. I like the respect bands from uh, Forever Young. Somehow OG got their hands on that visage way too many times. Yeah. I think one thing that OG does really interestingly uh, compared to other teams is they're very good about controlling space and we've seen it at like a lot of major finals as well like especially the Phoenix um, with Faces Void patch it was interesting how they play around the map they really understand where the strengths and weaknesses are where, where they're going to have uh, advantages mm -hmm. and I think one of the big reasons that they pick Visage all the time is for that vision it's uh, right. I think another reason they picked Arc Warden because they can throw Spark Wraiths everywhere right. and they always know where their opponents sure. are and that kind of like spatial control is 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 really a big fixture of how they play their games very yeah, often. That's a, that's a good identifier. I do. I mean, I'm with you on the respect band, the visage, uh, spirit, obviously, and then the warlock. Uh, it, this is just. Um, I mean, did you notice what happened? Encountered. Yeah. Did you know what, notice what happened when the warlock went up? The warlock band went up. They were on OG, <laughs> and Fly immediately laughed, and <laughs> so did his teammates. They all <laughs> chuckled because they were like, oh, 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 "You've got a respect yeah. band." It's it's really uncanny because. Or uncanny. It's, it's it's really odd because normally you see teams banning out a lot of cores in yeah. the second phase. Mm -hmm. And it seems just OG, <laughs> Fly and, and Jerex just make sure you know you got to bend yeah, the support. Yeah, and a as well. And like that's four supports. That's incredible. There's, there's that is not often incredible. that you see that. Where's the life stealer uh, we, we band? Where's the life stealer band? This no basically, yeah, this basically says we don't care what Anna plays, we don't care what No Tail plays. Which you know you <laughs> should <laughs> yeah, care. Absolutely. What they play for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but you can have a pick of all the fields, you're just not having any of your own supports. But this is also saying how important Forever Young thinks that the early stages is. They have obviously the Monkey King. This is their strength hero. White is is good on this hero, and this is where, where they get the momentum from. And the things that's going to stop their momentum, it it's Jerex and it's Fly. So they uh, make sure that they possibly, if they, if they get their wish, depending on what OG comes up with, obviously, yeah. Uh, get the best early game they can possibly have. I mean, there's also the fact that th it might well be respect, obviously, but there's also the fact that they need support. Yeah, oh yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Eventually. Eventually. I mean, there's still Dazzle, which is some a hero that Fly plays all the time as well. There's even even still an Io in the pool. I don't know if they're going to want to Dazzle, because uh, it's going to prevent Delina from using Bloodstone to suicide all the time. That's a joke. I know. Okay. It's like <laughs> because we have seen it happen. Bloodstone to save your teammates. Yeah, I know. That's, 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 that's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> it counteracts the whole Dazzle grave. That's hilarious. You guys suck. <laughs> Thanks, Purge. <laughs> Thanks, Purge. Seems good. <laughs> hey, I you th made Gabe laugh. Look at that. <laughs> I think I think Dazzle is likely now, especially with the starter pick. It's very burst heavy, lots of minus armor. So some kind of support that covers that would be... It's usually grabbed here. Uh, very often we see Dazzles in response to this. And Fly plays a lot of Dazzle. He does. He does. Uh, we assume for now that Lena per perhaps is going to be for Anna, but mm, we've maybe. seen a lot of Lena support as well. It's been a little bit of both coming into uh, yeah. to this tournament. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a good pick second, isn't it, Purge, for that reason? Yeah, it, it, it covers makes the other both team bases. think that it could be a it could be something mm -hmm. else, and then and then oh. worried about ooh. And it combos really well with Centaur as well, since he always sets up the first stun, gives you a second stun, burst damage, that kind of thing. Winter Wyvern's definitely interesting, though. Yeah. It's not, yeah. It doesn't really give you armor, but it does prevent you from dying to physical for yeah. four seconds. So it's similar. Um, it can fly over trees. Okay. Mobile, yeah. uh, spatial yeah. control, right? Yeah, and Monkey, Monkey King. King. And, uh, oh, great point. Yeah, yeah. And if you time it perfectly... You can when kill the trees. Exactly. Yes. When Archer Fern ends, the trees explode. But, but... If Monkey King has already started his animation, he can jump from the tree you're about to destroy that's anyway. That's why you buy a blink dagger, you time it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> it's four seconds done. I mean, we're going to see it happen. Yeah. If any game, it will be here. Yeah, yeah I mean, definitely. we've seen the weirdly, we've seen the cockle um, a few times as a, as a counter mm -hmm. to the Monkey King in terms of vision. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's worked okay. That's obviously been banned out by LG. That's probably one of the reasons they banned it anyway. Um, 
we haven't seen that many other attempts that directly counter the Monkey King, have we? No, we've like seen Newbie, a for of instance, didn't, spirits, they didn't counter it; they just ignored it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like a lot of other teams counter it by buying or grabbing their own roamers yeah. that are strong, rather than thinking like what it exactly does beat Monkey King. But that's that's kind of the issue. There aren't a lot of things that straight up just counter Monkey King, unless uh, unless you're thinking about like swap or something yeah. like that, or something like disarms him and prevents or him just from attacking. Destroy the trees on. on oh look, on it's a no yeah. Yeah, we haven't seen a Timbersaw, for instance, just cutting stuff up. Uh, No-Till is, uh, yeah, is a beast on Terrorblade, by the way. I mean, if you're not going to ban out any cores, he can play whatever he wants, and I think that he's going to be very happy with this. Even though he doesn't look very happy right now. He looks... He's very yeah. animated, isn't he? Very <laughs> animated. <laughs> he's a super high <laughs> armor hero. That That's part of the really good part uh, mm -hmm. here. T so all the physical damage coming from LGD Forever Young is going to be a bit mitigated, but I really like the Ember Spirit pick. I feel like it kind of messed up what OG wanted to do. Like, Winter Wyvern was looking all right so far, but... Now I'm, I'm not so confident about it. If if Embridge goes Veil, I feel like they you can the still magic. burst those heroes. Also has more average damage on towers than any other hero in the game right now. Terrorblade? Mm. Yeah, it's not surprising. He already does like 50% more damage than any other hero. So let's see, he's all big and tall and making a bunch of illusions. He just does stupid amounts of damage output. Um, so they're kind of, I, I guess the Centaur Lina core is, is already pretty good for killing Ember. I guess they don't need that many Ember solutions, but... Um, last pick, maybe something more reliable. Uh, maybe something good uh, to try to shut down some roaming. Um, I assume Fly will be playing the Wyvern, most yes. likely. Yes. So this is going to be a Jarek's hero. And they're still Tuscan Pool. Mm. Don't Which is think definitely they do a that. Jarek's hero. It, it is. is I, um, but it doesn't I, really match too yeah. well, does it? I, it, it doesn't really like defensively cover that much. The only like big obvious skill coming out is going to be something like Ember Triple Remnant or something. But that's kind of uh, I th feel like what Winter Wyvern already does. It's like prevent crucial moments when somebody's about to die. You don't really need that. Maybe. Okay. Um, what would you like to see from him? Because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of heroes banned out that he would play. Maybe something like Oracle would be kind of cool. Is that crazy mm. to think uh, they could uh, purge off? Um, Amplified, no, nope, Corrosive Haze, or whatever the heck it's called. I now. mean, it's, uh, Maybe it's a good hero for that, but I f feel like, you know, uh, I'm not a fan of Oracle. I feel like yeah, he is second rate right to Dazzle. Yeah, I would agree. And I, Dazzle I, I is still Dazzle a pool, is better, but Jarex is not a Dazzle player. Or rather, he probably is, but it's not a da it's not a Jarex hero. I want him to be able yeah. to do more. I w how greedy can they be with the lineup that's there right now? Uh, OG like can't be too much more greedy. Like, Winter Wyvern's already a little bit weak as a support. Ter terribly can get pressured. I, I think they need something that's... That's uh, pretty straightforward and strong. Okay. And does it need to have a save, or is Winter Ripen enough? I I mean, a save, sure, whatever, it's fine. But I, I think they have other problems that are more important. They need more catch. Okay. Uh, maybe more more setup. That way, if Centaur can't get a stomp, they have somebody else that can open up and uh, pr let Lena get a disable off. I think that's more important right now. Ooh, a Lena support. Okay. Well, you said they couldn't be more greedy. I was thinking <laughs> from a support perspective, but yep. uh, <laughs> this, this could work. So that would be a Lena support yeah. now. Yes. That will be a Jarex Lena. I Most I likely. This, this works. I, yeah. He just has stupid amounts of regen here. Um, <laughs> LGD Forever Young, can they can they get away with like an A or something? Is that too crazy? Um, That depends if they have like their Venge. Will that be the core? Will it be support? Uh, they could do both. Uh, I think they were thinking core looking at their lineup right now, but um, they're flexible with their picks. Yeah, because uh, it will, will be, be support. support. Wow. So uh, Shadow Fiend. I I still favor OG like after it. this draft, but I don't know. It's it can work. I'm really like white. There's a lot of pressure on white. I think. Yeah, well, I, I think there's a lot of pressure on both sides here, Purge, isn't it? Yeah, I think so too. Um, the OG draft is kind of harder to read, I think, but I think Elk was a good way to make uh, Cold Embrace a better skill. He's already high HP, high regen. Now he's got even better. Mm. I, I think it's good. I think OG can win with it, but I like Elf Wise draft as well. It's a good mix of more minus armor with the SF and magic damage, so they're not all in on the same type. That's good. Kay. All right, we're going to get more from both Shiva and Purge after our first game, but let's head back to the commentary desk. Now, we've also had a change-up. This time around, it's Capital and Lyrical to bring you the game. Thank you very much, Paul. And we're here. We're oh, my God, your eyes. That was Thank intense. You, you look very, They're beautiful eyes, very serious. They? Oh, my goodness. But we're here. It's LFY versus OG. OG has been dominant throughout Group A. Cap, well, what are your thoughts? Are, are you feeling like this is the draft that they need to put it over the edge? That last pick, Alchemist, I think threw everybody a little bit for a... Uh, 
It seemed a little bit awkward, right? Uh, I'll give you my honest thoughts, Lyrical. I'm real tired of seeing <laughs> Alchemist. I'm very tired of seeing this hero. But, um, you know, it was a good play by OG. It, it does seem to be like a really good Alchemist game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if LGD actually were able to, excuse me, LFY were able to change their draft enough to be able to deal with that. Um, switching things around and moving the Ember Spirit into the safe lane and then going for a mid SF is good in theory. Like maybe SF with the help of a, a rotation can pick up an early level five kill on the Alchemist, but right. it's, it feels kind of unlikely. You know, Alchemist is just going to bounce back to the jungle. Um, I think LFY is going to be pretty pressured to to make things happen. And, and we're going to see what we're going to see the OG that we saw earlier, right? Where No Tail as a Terror Blade is a huge space creator. Um, he he had such an amazing day one uh, on that Terror Blade. I was very impressed by him. No, totally. I, I think that it was. Oh, good luck, baby. Comes mm. out Monet. All being, right. Being a little bit saucy early on here. I like this. You don't always end up seeing the the sort of banter that you normally have between similar regions. It's it's nice to see it. Yeah, I know. Trying to distract OG with sex appeal is a pretty good idea. I think Motel's <laughs> pretty susceptible to that. So Fair enough. <laughs> clever play. D much like the Arteezy Eternal Envy love hate relationship. You know how I Envy got the the early one up on Arteezy by tilting him in a pub. Similar yeah. scenario here. You gotta you gotta reach outside of the game, outside of the box, you know, <laughs> Gabe, to to find those little advantages. Well, I like the idea of it. Early on, you already see Anna here uh, cutting down a lot of these trees. They do not want to allow Monkey King to mess with them, and this is a really cool idea. You sit around for a little while. You got a quelling blade. What else do you have to do besides try and you know hunt for a Monkey King or cut off his ability to jump around? And now movement in. I think that this is going to be effective. Yeah, this could be pretty interesting. Oh, there's smoke pops on the Monkey King. That's a bit unfortunate. They really wanted to get the Bounty Rune kill um, and just be able to pop out, kill the SF, take his Bounty Rune or something. But they're actually not going to be able to get a Bounty Rune for Anna because oh, of that. What? Okay. Well, that's really unfortunate, certainly. And... And it ends up trading off all across <laughs> the just board. Just a wild tree walking across <laughs> the lane. <laughs> ah, the creeps, they're oh so dumb. They're, they're just like, ah, that's normal. Yeah, trees walk all the time. No big deal. Just yeah. keep moving, fellas. Well, how much does that hurt Ana right now? He's going to actually start with Acid Spray since he didn't end up getting a Bounty Rune. This feels like it might make it a little bit more easy for him against Super on the Shadow Fiend in the mid lane. It slows down his bottle timing slightly, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you make up for it in, uh, in CS, it seems, as he hits all four of those creeps and super, little super's already low on uh, on regions, so he's going to have to burn through those shared tangos pretty early. No. You know, you talked a lot about No-Tail on the Terrorblade. He's been playing it fairly consistently throughout this, but we haven't seen a lot of the safe lane Ember. Does this differ at all from the normal mid lane in any meaningful fashion, or is it just you come online a little bit earlier? No, not terribly. It's, it's just like... Um, We've seen it a few times before DAC, and it's just when you're forced into it because there's a bad mid matchup. Okay. Um, it, it's it doesn't like hurt the hero very much. It does seem a little lackluster from a safe lane farming position. The hero does still put pressure on most off laners, but Centaur is going to be one that's going to be more difficult to put pressure on. Um, he's tankier than normal. He also has a heavy amount of magic damage coming out from that hoof stomp to clear through the flame guard early. So. Um, the first couple of levels, you're not really going to put too much threading power on S4. You can already see here as well, five and three to start off his laning phase. S4 is having a wonderful time. They are going to try and get a little bit of a slow onto S4 for the moment, force him back out of lane, but it does not look like LPC is going to get within range to throw the magic missile or even have any great desire to do it. Yeah, I think this is why they bring White down here is because the Ember Spirit, Vengeful Spirit, is not going to be good enough. So bring the extra hero to shove the Centaur out of lane. Can't let him uh, have a good start. That does leave uh, G-Sing over here on the Slardar um, left alone. Normally, he would have the Monkey King as a, sort of an aggro dual lane against the Lina Terra Blade, but Ooh. he's going to have to wait a little bit. Jerax always wanted to rotate, wants to go in with the Winter Wyvern, but unfortunately, there was a quick spot of it. Super backs out, and they weren't able to find anything with that rotation. But still, it's it's not necessarily like it's a bad time at all. Both heroes just farming away. Uh, maybe Shadow Fiend a little bit ahead in terms of denies, although Ana's getting a couple more last hits. Looking for possibly a kill if he had enough there for that last raise it would have been his death yeah could have gone the long range raise if he just had five more mana got an early kill but now anna popped his healing salve has the bottle in hand and he'll be good until probably about level five 
Um, DSF gets another big power spike with the raises and um, can actually get a 1-2-3 raise combination that brings down Alchemist. But because of the Monkey King's influence as well, I highly anticipate Anna's just going to abandon lane uh, around level 4 and a half, 5. Give that lane to Jarex, perhaps, as the, uh, as the Winter Wyvern, or even S4. If he's struggling to find farm, he could rotate over, and Anna could just spend time in the jungle. Uh, he's already got stacks available, as you can see. Ooh, this is really good. Yeah, this early levels, Monkey King is going to try and soak up some experience here. And if he gets a couple of levels, gets a couple points in that Boundless Strike, suddenly you're going to have a great possibility to find kills when Ana goes back to mid lane and then the raise comes out. But for now at least, just going to soak up experience. Looks like LPC is going to come over to contest a little bit as well. They need to do something because they can't just let the Salk farm like this. <laughs> uh, White is going to jump down and start getting some damage onto Anna. Maybe they can actually kill him. There's the magic missile that comes out. Super there as well. Right click and the raise. They take him down. Jerax is just going to back out and away. White in the meantime trying to run away. They've brought in flies. Well, a very tenuous situation. The neutral ends up denying the Monkey King. S4 is chasing Super, who is behind and in between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 towers. And, well, they lose another as well. Three die, one of them to neutrals. But it's a heavy price to pay for killing that Alk. Yeah, I think that OG did not expect that kind of rotation because there, there's a big reason why you don't rotate into that off-lane jungle area is that you're very rapidly going to be surrounded by heroes. Uh, there's a lot of TP points, and there was a, an aggro dual lane situation going on for uh, OG. Nice deny in the bounty rune there from Super, denying that from Ana. So it ends up working to the favor. Like, yeah, they took the stack, but it doesn't matter. Like, Anna came back. He got a little bit of CS in mid. The supports really benefited off of that, but they're going to kill Anna again. Nicely done. This rotation game from LFY constantly putting them in those positions to find these kills, it's working out fabulously. And I'm looking around at some of the other lanes, and it's going pretty well there. Um, no Tail is... Ooh. Oh, they got another kill here. Jerex is going to drop. Wow. And Super keeps being the one to find these kills as well which I feel is so important. Yeah, he's moving around quite a bit as the, the SF. Very smart of him, though. They are going to lose their offlane tower pretty early. That's kind of standard against a, a Terra Blade, who's got a very favorable matchup against the Slardar. There's not much G-Sync can really do about this. Yeah, this has been the sort of style that No-Tail has been playing as well, trying to make space for Ana in the mid lane, so that way he can just farm to his heart's content and then carry them in the later stages of the game. It does feel already, though, that you know they're able to hem in Ana a little bit. They also uh, were able to get, finally, the D-Wards over on the camps that Alchemist was stacking. Do you need to be too concerned about Shadowfiend just getting out of control, being 3-1 and with 30 last hits at this point? Mm, it depends on how well S4 is doing, because if the Shadow Fiend gets farm, he can still be shut down by an early Blink Dagger from S4. So that that's the concern for me. Um, they get level 6 on Lina, they get the Blink Dagger on the Centaur, they just try and initiate on the big damage dealer every single time, and, and he's pretty susceptible to having nuking power. So. I wouldn't be too concerned if I was OG, and simultaneously, if I'm LFY, I don't want to feel too victorious about shutting down Anna's farm early because the Terrorblade is going to be coming in to create space for Anna. So you create a minor bump in the road now, but it doesn't mean much in the long run to an Alchemist. Yeah. And I mean, the Acid Spray, kill off the creeps very quickly. Ana heads back to the jungle. It makes sense. Uh, apparently, we've got yeah. a little bit of Ka going on. Yeah, a little Kale. So um, G-Sing is because No Tail's pushing into him so heavily. Um, he is getting some okay CS as a Slardar. Like, Slardar is usually very inhibited in CS. It gets very poor farm as a solo offlaner. He's so easily shoved away by uh, one support and one carry. But because of a 1v1 scenario, he is getting a bit more. And maybe he can have an earlier impact in this game, just like S4 is. But I highly anticipate this Centaur is going to be a lot more impactful. We'll have the faster Blink Dagger, and his skill set, uh, honestly, will allow him just to do a lot more. No, oh, definitely. The Stampede, very impactful in the early points before the Blink Dagger even comes online. But it's also worth noting, they don't have as many of those easy point-and-click stuns that you sort of need to start the team fights. Fly is probably the best example of it with Light Strike Ray, but that's not super reliable. It does feel to me like there's going to be this timing when you've got Boundless Strike, you've got Magic Missile, and LFY are going to hit a nice timing there. Do you think that that's something that you need to be concerned about for OG? 
Yeah, they, this is going to be a timing pretty soon here. Usually when you have uh, level 8 or 9 and working on Veil is when the, your safe lane Ember Spirit comes into play and starts being super active. But they're actually going to try and bring him in a lot earlier, and it may surprise OG. Oh, they're there on the no-tail, the jump forward with the Remnant Monet. Oh, they don't decide to go for it. And so because of that, well, it recognizes that Ember Spirit rotated out of lane. We'll see if they can make anything of it nonetheless. You see S4 at bottom, he's like, sweet. <laughs> All right, I, I get a now 1v1 against a level 3 Vengeful Spirit. More farming time for me. I really like that OG keep on just tearing down trees whenever they get an opportunity to. They just keep on buying Quellen Blades and, and make that happen. A scan is going to reveal that Jusing is heading down towards that uh, rune as well. Winter Wyvern is going to head off into the trees, and from that, should be able to continue the aggression. Yeah, they hook up with the Monkey King Slardar duo. This this should be, in theory, a, a very powerful duo. A lot of physical damage, some minus armor now that Slardar's level 6. But uh, they're not leaving any important heroes at top. In fact, it's going to be maybe LPC dies. Oh, well, trying to turn. S4 actually is going to end up dropping there. The Stampede, just a second too late. and. Well, Super ends up being a part of that kill again. He has yeah. been everywhere. I was like, S4 is probably like, what the hell is a Shadow Fiend doing in the bottom lane? Like, how did that happen? Um, LFY seem to have some pretty unique ideas of, about moving this SF around so much. They're now going to let Monet occupy the, the middle lane, though I do like this is what OG's special flavor is to the Terror Blade. They bring him online super early and threaten towers. Um, they pretty much play like around the clock on this metamorphosis timer. Every single time it's off cooldown, uh, No Tail looks to make an aggressive maneuver. Likewise, though, the rest of LFY is here and super ready to jump in at a moment's notice. There were a couple of pinks. They might have scouted out that they're in the area. And it does look like OG are going to back out after doing about half damage to that mid tier one tower. Yeah, but look at the, the damage that No Tail caused. LFY, they took a lot of chip damage on their mid tier one tower. They also had to rotate multiple heroes into mid lane. And yeah, OG had to back off, but No Tail's still going to make use of that metamorphosis on the jungle. Now, LFY is doing the right play. They had to rotate like that, but now they have too many heroes here. They want to try and threaten the tower and see if they can actually get a fight. They're going right away onto Ana. Oh, the nice Sunder swap. coming in from No Tail. Going to keep them alive. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of help from your friends right there. Yeah, that was cool blade there from No Tail. He's going to back off, hit a shrine up, and then go straight into the jungle again while Ana uses that full HP to work on the Radiance some more. I was wondering if maybe they're thinking about diving further with a second remnant uh, towards No Tail, but that might have been a little bit too too bold. As Fly just going to soak up a little bit more for himself. No Tail comes back. Nothing really lost from that play. And still, uh, S4 Centaur is going to farm fairly close to his Blink Dagger. He's gotten good farm. Ooh, who doesn't have good farm? Though? <laughs> it's this good Ember point. Spirit, man. Ember Spirit is. He's only sitting at 3,200. Um, he's behind every other core in this game right now, despite having the, the safe lane. And he hasn't, he's made these rotations, but hasn't connected with any of them. That's because OG is playing pretty safe, right? They're oftentimes grouped around the mid area. Um, if they're top, most of the time it was Winter Wyvern. And this is going to potentially be the kill that he needs to get back into this game. They don't quite connect onto the chains, but they do still have remnants if they want to use it. Oh, the cold embrace. That was as the stampede came out, it looked like. And, well, he is going to end up paying for it. No Tail jumps forward. Monet going to find him, and they get that kill. Yeah, this is why No Tail was avoiding some of that top lane area is, is because of uh, potential rotations like that. He just didn't realize it was going to be in Viz Rune. Um, but OG are making the most of it, right? The space created by all those heroes being at top is, is going to be somewhat undone or rectified by the fact they're pushing in mid, get more chip damage onto that tower. In fact, it's now in deny range. Um, even if you don't get the bounty for the tower, it's still worth a lot just to be able to take away that map control. Absolutely. And, you know, we just see the Blink Dagger reveal on a great target a second ago, kind of waiting to see what S4 is going to do with the same type of thing. It just still is a problem where what's the follow-up afterwards? It feels like they need that uh, Terra Blade to, to be there to be the damage dealer since Lina doesn't really have the levels and Wyvern isn't really making that much happen at this early stage. Yeah, they've got Metamorphosis up. I think it's literally just waiting for Blink Dagger and level 6 on Lina. Um, he's just going to take a pause for a minute, though the fight may still happen at bottom first. They're on top of him, looking for the jump. They're able to catch. There's the crush as well. And so close to that Blink Dagger. Another huge kill for LFY. Yeah, that's gigantic, man. He 
really should have had his blink dagger by now. He was like nine gold away from it when he died. So uh, needs another 200, maybe play off the neutrals. But this does mean like no tails. He, he feels a little stymied now because normally he'd be making aggressive rotation about now. Now he has to wait a little longer for the centaur and Lena. Uh, Lena, who still needs another creep wave to hit his level six and have that Laguna blade ready to go. So arcane boots for her. You, you've got a lot of sustain here, but it does it, like it feels as if they need every piece of it to work together. Whereas if you take a look at LFY's draft, they only need like one or two heroes. You need the Venge and the Slardar, or the the Slardar and the the Shadow Fiend, um, and he, they are sort of grouped up in the mid lane now with Ember and Slardar there. They might think about going onto this Wyvern again, and I'll well, crush a little bit off the mark, not able to catch Jerex. Jerex has gotten a lot of solo time in lanes to kind of recover. This is uh, a really good way to allow your roamer to recover. You know, he was trying to move into the mid lane and do things like that, and he got really underleveled and underfarmed because of it, but they gave him some time at top. He now has his level six. Um, this Winter's Curse could be very impactful, either setting up potential stun combinations or even just getting them, allowing them to get the quick kill and then backing away um, in some ways using that Winter's Curse as a zoning mechanism. Well, there is another smoke by both teams as mid lane is where they're trying to bait out the Shadow Fiend. Although it looks as if OG not willing to go for the bait. Movement now down towards bottom. They want to try and catch this Alchemist. It does not look like he's going to stick around either, though. Both teams, I think, realize that there's ganks happening and don't want to be the one to lose their core. Yeah, too many heroes off map as a whole. So OG know to play pretty defensively. You can see their wards also very defensive, based around um, guarding the entrances to jungle areas where Anna is most commonly going to be found farming. So um, they just want to protect him. Oftentimes they want to play aggressive with four heroes um, on one side of the map, so Anna is able to farm the other side of the map. They want to draw attention away from him. There's also an invis rune on S4. This might be the missing piece in their draft, and this little team fight that's coming up that will end up tilting the scales, but looks like LFY again gonna back out. Ember Spirit goes mid, knows he needs to catch up, and they're gonna leave it be at that. So a very disciplined play coming out from LFY. I'm pretty impressed with what they've been able to put together so far. Yeah, I I did not watch the series of LFY versus Wings, but um, I think it was uh, Fog who said that LFY looked really good in that series. It wasn't just Wings choking or anything like that. So. LFY definitely, definitely deserves to be here. They're not just some schmucks who just kind of wandered into a big tournament like this. Absolutely. There's the Shadow Blade. Still not going to find. It's just OG are playing too grouped up and too defensive. At some point in time, LFY, this is the thing, is that OG play this kind of style, and, and teams will get a little bit too anxious. They know they need to get a team fight to happen eventually, and they're not patient enough. So eventually they just stumble into the wrong fight. You know, they, they push into a Tier 1 tower that's defended by OG, and OG will experience this big windfall as they successfully defend a tower and have a good team fight around it. LFY... They need to keep that patience. I, I know the Alchemist is in the game, but you can't worry too much about the the buildup of the Alk. That, that just makes, that'll just like force mistakes to happen. I mean, they do have to be aware of it because we did just see that Radiance picked up for them. And yeah. well, I, I understand the not forcing it issue. It's never a good idea, but maybe this is the answer as Monkey King is heading up towards the jungle. There's several other heroes in the area. It looks like over by the shrine now, Slardar trying to set up Ana's revealed as well, but they aren't going to go on him. Super may still find a, a Shadow Blade oh. initiation here. Yeah, looks like there is a Sentry Ward already dropped, though. and oh, Looks like OG now the ones to be aggressive. Very back and forth cat mouse games going on here. Yeah, this uh, aggressive poke out from OG with this smoke. But again, it does seem like LFY have pretty good read. They're going to let LPC drop here. Not a big deal by any means. Uh, it's not like there is even a mid-tower for OG to try and pressure anyway, so um, they're just going to use that time to go back and farm jungle. I mean, is the onus on L uh, LFY right now to find kills, or do you think yes. that... Yes. Okay, it very much is. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, they just can't get too over-anxious and stumble into the wrong team fight. Um, they're still farming pretty well. The The big thing is that like SF needs to continually bounce off of jungle and lane. Like a, a, SF needs to not quite match the, the Alchemist in farm, but he does need to be kind of keeping pace. I would say within a 2 to 3k window. 
um, for for the first like 25 minutes of this game. Um, the SF is not the 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 tower hitter that he will be eventually. Mm -hmm. So in some of this early game, they don't really have the the power to just overwhelm these outer tier one towers. And OG know that. Um, OG know that they have enough fighting prowess to be able to defend tier one towers. And it's it's why they're waiting for that mistake of LFY. You know, it almost feels to me as if LFY are thinking that they can go later, though, and, and be comfortable in it. Because you, you saw there the slaughter. He's going back for the hand of Midas at this point. Um, obviously, it's just to remain relevant as the game goes on. He knows it has the potential to go late. But it doesn't feel as if they're under pressure. Or maybe they're... It, it doesn't feel like it's a lack of confidence either, though. You oh, know? no, no, no. I, I think they, from judging from their play... They really are being very confident about their decisions. I wouldn't say necessarily they feel good about going super late game or anything like that, but I do think their timing is going to be button based much more around 25 and 30 minutes rather than trying to make, you know, force things to happen at 15 and 20. Okay. Um, you can't let, like, just the Radiance itself on the Alchemist make all the decisions for you. Because he's getting Radiance at this time, we need to take all their outer towers.